Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue our study of triple integrals. And in this section, we're going to learn specifically about triple integrals and cylindrical coordinates, OK? So when you're confronted with a, with a title like triple integration and, and cylindrical coordinates, or maybe in the next section, triple integration and spherical coordinates, I mean, it has such a long-winded title, it just seems like it's going to be a really hard thing to do, OK? Well, it's not. It's not a hard thing to do. If you look at the, the section right before this, the concept of a triple integral uh, was very simply you had a function in three-dimensional space, uh, space, which could be a function, you know, uh, temperature as a function of space or magnetic field strength as a function of space. Every point in space, all over the place, uh, uh, from me to you and left and right and up and down, it permeates space. You have a function of three dimensions, okay? And what we want to do is we want to integrate this function over some volume, okay? So in the last section, that's all we did, day in and day out. We integrated those functions. We defined our volume in terms of dx, dy, and dz in the rectangular system. And then we did the integration, OK? But in the end, all you're really doing is you're defining a volume. And you have this function that permeates the volume. And you're basically adding the, the function up over that volume is really what you're doing. The integration is an infinite summation of things, OK? So instead of in the last section, what we did with rectangular coordinates, x, y, and z, in this section, we're going to learn about something called cylindrical coordinates, and we're going to work a lot of problems dealing with that. So don't let the title of it scare you. Cylindrical coordinates is just another coordinate system that you may or may not have used before, and it makes, um, makes certain kinds of problems very simple. That's why we do it, okay? But in, at the end of the day, you can sort of visualize it. Think about this cylinder that goes up and down, okay? And it's going to be very useful. Cylindrical coordinates are going to be very useful for problems that have that, that type of circular symmetry that kind of stretches up and down and has like a circular symmetry to it. And I think you'll see exactly why here. First thing we need to do is go ahead and draw a little picture and describe to you what cylindrical coordinates really are. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is draw our traditional kind of three-dimensional uh, coordinate system here that we've been drawing from the very beginning of this class, okay? So you have the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So far, nothing has changed from what you already know. But what we're going to do is we're going to superimpose on top of this what you're going to learn and come to know is the cylindrical coordinate system, which really isn't a big deal at all, okay? So in Cartesian coordinates, it takes three numbers to specify where a point is in space. If you have a point here, uh, you need to know the x-coordinate, which is just the distance along x, the y-coordinate, the distance this way, and the z-coordinate, the distance this way. So if you have a point in three-dimensional space, it takes three numbers to represent that point, x, y, and z. What we're going to find out is that if you use a cylindrical system, you still need three numbers to specify where the point is. It's just that instead of x, y, and z, you use something else. Okay, So that's exactly what we're going to do. So what I'm going to present to you and sort of show you here is the following. What if instead of x, y, and z, we use the following system here? Let's go down here, OK, and draw a little line there. And let's say that this line here makes an angle theta with the x-axis. This line, by the way, we're going to label it r because it has a length r. OK, the length is r. And this line here lies in the plane of x and y. Okay, And what we're going to do then is then extend this thing out of the plane up here. And we're going to say, let's go up a little bit higher. And what we're going to say, just for clarity here, that this distance is the z-coordinate. And by the way, this is the point P, let's say, the point P that we're actually interested in, in specifying. So what we're trying to say here, uh, big picture here, is to... To represent the point P, to represent the point P, the way that you always know or you've always learned about, you can use the, the numbers x, y, and z. Three numbers, x, y, and z. What we're saying is cylindrical coordinates, you can use three different numbers, okay? And those numbers are going to be r, theta, and z. OK, so just let that sink in a little bit. OK, what we're going to do is instead of using three numbers to go up and over and map to that point, what we're going to do is we're going to use the exact same Z coordinate. You remember Z is the height of, you know, in both systems. Z is the height above the X, Y plane. That's what Z is. So the Z coordinate in these two systems are exactly the same. There's no difference. If it were 1, 3, 4, 
then here you'd have a number, a number, and it would also be four. So z is exactly the same because the height above the xy plane is exactly the same number. The only thing we're doing in cylindrical coordinates is instead of specifying x and a y, we're going to use the polar representation, which we've already done before in the double integration in the, uh, the last section, the last uh, the Cal 3 volume 1, which you've already looked at by now. So instead of x and y, we're going to use r and theta. So by specifying a length r and a theta that it makes with the x, y, with the, uh, x axis here, then you can put you know, this, this, sort, this thing here anywhere in the xy plane, and of course the z value is going to be exactly the same, okay? So if you haven't gone back and done the double integration, which I think you all have, then go back and do it now, the double integration in polar coordinates, because we talked about this quite a bit. The double integration in polar coordinates, it was just dx and dy, we were integrating over x and y, and we said that for certain problems, instead of using x and y, we could use r and theta. r is just a length, just like a, a vector length, and theta is just the, the distance, I'm sorry, the angle from the x-axis to, to, that, to that length r, okay? And those two numbers, r and theta, exactly uniquely identify the point, just like x and y do. So in this, we're doing exactly the same thing. x and y are replaced by r and theta, which is the same r and theta that we were using before in the double integrals and the polar coordinates, and we're using the exact same quantity z in both cases. So you can see why it's called a cylindrical system, right? Because if you kind of look at this, it's like since we're using z, the same z uh, coordinate there, it can, you can sort of visualize this as a cylinder. You choose r and theta and you go up to z. So it's very, very good for any kind of a system where you actually have some sort of cylindrical boundary or anything that's some, somewhat circular. It doesn't even have to be a perfect circle, but if it's some sort of thing that kind of goes off in a circle, if you're looking at a long pipe, let's say, if you're studying something inside of a pipe, or if you're studying the um, electromagnetic or maybe a microwave waveguide, like a coaxial cable that your, your cable television comes into your house, that's a, that's a waveguide. There's a, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a wave in there that comes from the cable company, right, that feeds your television. Well, maybe you're studying that thing, and if this cable's 100 miles long, if you're really studying the details of how the thing travels and how the wave goes in, in there, it might be much more uh, simple to use a cylindrical coordinate system, because then you have r and theta, and then z is the length along the cable, okay? You wouldn't want to use, you know, a rectangular system for that necessarily, x, y, and z, because it just the, the problem really lends itself to it to a cylindrical system, so that's why it's useful. And that's why we're going to do these, these uh, triple integrals in the, in the cylindrical system. So now that you know what it is, it's not a big deal. Instead of x, y, and z, it's r, theta, and z. It's the same r and theta that you learned before. Okay. So because of that, everything that follows here in the next few minutes is going to be very familiar to you before.